ஐடியல் ஐஸ்கிரீம் மில்கி வீ டு யோர் ஹார்ட் Welcome to a very interesting episode on Thank You Karnataka. This episode is related to education. In the studios of News Karnataka, we have uh, Dr. Gracie Fernandez. she was the vice president of uh, nirmala niketan she is a daughter of the soil she was born in mangalore and then did her studies in bombay uh, mumbai actually and then went on to madagascar and haiti lot of experience in working with children and families but i would like to begin by asking dr gracie fernandez um what is social work uh, is it charity or is it something more than that yeah normally social work is considered as charity if you ask any uh, p- person who is visiting somebody she'll say i'm doing social work that is the normal uh, common understanding of social work t- until we began social work professional education now social work profession education of course began in the west and came to india in 1936 with the first institute of professional social work by the name of tata institute of social science in bombay and we began college of social work nirmala niketan in 1956 so we were uh, the third college of social work in so called india and since then the social work education that was begun in nirmala niketan began first of all as a simple diploma till 1965 we were the first batch to appear for the bombay university exam and it came to know be known as masters degree in social work now why is it a profession social work is a profession because we are essentially in direct contact with individuals with families with communities doing direct practice hence we have to accept the person we have to respect the person we believe that the, every single individual has human rights has a self determination and has capacity and potential potentials for change and development So basically you are saying that social work is an enabler it is not charity it's an ena- enabler you yeah. help people to help themselves yeah. yes so i think um, a lot of work is being done in that i i've got uh, uh, i myself i'm a student of roshni and i have a lot of friends who have been doing social work in different fields there is uh, the of course the hr field the community development field which is the broadest then you have the psychiatric social work and so many others including forensic sciences if i'm not mistaken yes Are you planning to settle in the capital of West Coast of Karnataka? If so, here is a ready to build property adjacent to Mangaluru city amidst lush green, which indeed is the right place to have a happy home. Just 20 minutes at a distance of 10 kilometers from the heart of the city, located at Neer Marga, is one of the most prominent developing area of Mangaluru city limits. A peace and serene place surely be loved by your dear ones. Surrounded by natural trees and valleys, the 13th sense plot of solid terrain is the destination for construction of your everlasting dream home. Various educational institutions, hospitals, malls, historical and religious places at close vicinity will be additional booster for your comfortable and holistic lifestyle. The ready to sale plot located near Manipal University's proposed campus will assure you good ROI if you are thinking in terms of investment. Contact plus nine one eight one nine seven one four three six seven five or eight two one seven seven two nine eight five nine. In social work, when you were in the Mumbai University, and subsequently, uh, what were your? Can you just give us one experience that you were involved in? 
uh, one of the experiences that I was involved in, I would uh, really relate it to the 1996 raids in the red light area in Bombay. Mm -hmm. The Times of India front page said that the highest percentage of HIV AIDS is being spread by the prostitutes in the red light area. So okay. therefore, there were raids conducted, very sudden and quick raids at an unearthly hour conducted in the, in the brothels of the red light area and they pulled out 500 young girls right from the age of 14 to 30. Among them, the greatest majority were Nepali beautiful girls, young girls. There were girls from Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Assam and all over India. So when these raids took place and they pulled out these girls, it was at an unearthly hour. They were with their customers. They were some of them without even clothes and they were just pulled out by the police. The madams who owned the brothels hit some of the girls underground. There was a cutting in the flooring and the madam was sitting on it and she had hidden the girls. The police made the madam get up, open the opening of the floor and remove the girls. So when the girls were taken in the police van, they went to one orphanage, one Catholic orphanage in Bombay at Baikala. And the sister, when she saw this big police van and these brothel girls screaming and shouting, she called the College of Social Work Nirmala Niketan because she thought that we may, as a College of Social Work, help. So it hap so happened that I was passing and I picked up the phone and she said, please help us, there's a van here with girls just pulled out from brothel. What should we do? Should we take them in or should we not take them in? I said, sister, do you get government aid to help your children in the orphanage? And she said, yes. Then I told her, you have to take the girls because you receive government funding. So hence, all the 500 girls were taken to this orphanage. And immediately they had to take out the little children, the orphans and put them somewhere else. So I told her, I will come next morning, early morning. So at seven, we had, Fortunately, I have Nepali students. So I took these Nepali students and I went to this orphanage. And there were these girls with their bras and petticoats. And some of them even had chicken pox. Mm -hmm. And they were HIV positive girls as well. So when I first went there, they were just standing and drinking their tea. When they saw me, I was touched by this. They offered me their tea. I said, oh my God. How can I take a teacup which this girl is drinking? And But nevertheless, since her kind offer, I drank the tea. And then we sat down and then never forget these three questions that the girl asked. Why are we brought here? Where were you when we first came here? And what shall we do after once we release? So because they were brought here, under false pretext of, of jobs and put in the brothels. And at, of course, at that time, it is a connection between the agents and the brothel owner who pays big sums, younger the girl, bigger the project, uh, bigger the money. And then we told the girls, we'll do our very best to see that immediately you're taken away and, and taken back home to Nepal. I would attend every single court case in the High Court, every, uh, every time there was a hearing. And there were, besides me and our lawyer, there were the brothel madams also trying to defend themselves and wanting the girls back. Finally, the judge was so scared that he called me individually and spoke to me and I explained to him. He was scared of uh, getting HIV AIDS through these girls. So I told him, sir, please don't worry. We are here from the College of Social Work. He trusted me and then he released the girls. These girls were kept in three orphanages, all Catholic orphanages. And it was so interesting that when these girls were taken out from the brothels and the people standing by saw these girls 
and he saw one particular Nepalese girl who was a friend of this young man's friend who was a sailor and he always wanted to take the girl and get married to her. So this gentleman phoned the sailor, please come soon, the girl is out of the brothel. He took the next flight and was in Bombay and he was standing there. And the girl smiled at him because she saw him. The police said, at whom are you smiling? So she pointed the finger at this young gentleman. The, the police beat up this young gentleman, took him to the police custody. Of course, then I went there, explained, and he was released. He came with this girl to our community, and he told me how he had met this girl. And the father had come also. The father was limping, he had his leg broken, and when he was in hospital, the agents came and his cousin sold the girl. And the father told me he was been searching for the girl and he was so thanking God that he found her at last. This young man married this girl. They had a beautiful Hindu wedding at which she invited me with the tying of the girl's sari to the, the dupatta of the gentleman and walking around with the fire throwing rice. And he wanted to take the girl, he made a passport and wanted to take her with him on the ship. So when he went, they had to do the medical test and he went for the medical test, he was heartbroken because his girl was HIV positive. So this was a touching uh, experience that I had with my students, staff. And even one day I was going through the parlor of Nirmala Niketan and suddenly one young lady stopped me. She says, Madam, do you remember me? I said, I'm sorry, I don't. You were one of those who pulled us out during the raids and you took me back and gave me professional training. Here am I now married happily with my children. So basically, basically yeah. what you're trying to say is people are in very difficult circumstances yes. and you as social workers try to help them, give them a new lease of life basically. Yes. I think that's a, that's a wonderful experience that you narrated and yes. it's an eye-opener for all of us. Uh, you uh, subsequently did your uh, PhD at the Fordham University in, uh, in uh, the UK, yes. uh, if I am correct. Yes. Um, and one of, I think your thesis was on child sponsorship. Yes. So child sponsorship, uh, what does it actually entail and how is it relevant to India? I mean, the Indian situation, I'm, I'm sure you are following the current situation uh, of children in India. And in fact, we are a very young country and a lot of children are now below 15. Yes. As uh, in the next few years, I think we are going to be an even younger country. So. Uh, how does it work? I mean, child sponsorship, how, do, how is it relevant to India? I think you wrote your PhD thesis many years ago. Yes. But uh, can you give us the relevance to the current situation? Yeah, the reason why I, uh, I chose this topic was because I had really hands-on direct experience of working with children and helping them through sponsorship in the uh, Bombay, one of the worst slums in Kardanda and in different parts in India, as well as I thank God for the experiences I've had in evaluating sponsorship programs in Southeast Asia, in Vietnam, Cambodia, Philippines, and in other Western African countries in West Benin, in Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, Rwanda, and in other places as Madagascar as well. Now, child sponsorship is like social work related to charity. Okay. It is more than mere relief. It is more than just finance. It really began when a well-to-do person saw a poor person or somebody approached him or her, he gave money for the schooling. This is how sponsorship began. But today we have international agencies, national agencies and local agencies like World Vision, Plan International. In India, we have CRI and many other agencies who are Global Fund for Children, for example, who are working for children. And hence, sponsorship is a professional work with children for their growth and development. Amritya Sen says that 
two social va variables are the most important education and health these social variables are the prime foundation for the growth and development of the child attention here are two properties located just adjacent to nh73 at melgar bc road which is the place most appropriate to realize the dream of having the home for a happy living just 30 km drive from mangaluru the west coast capital of karnataka two layouts of 20 cents and 19 cents respectively with village ambience are ready to build with clear documents the hill opposite to these properties are reserved for the proposed university campus of a prestigious manglo based institution giving you indeed the right investment opportunities in future payas religious centers around will give you a spiritual feel amid modern lifestyle on time healthcare facilities and educational opportunities are available within reach contact 91 8197143675 or 8217729859 so just one question this sponsorship is basically you're not talking only about finance no it, 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 what else does it encompass now child sponsorship as a professional work follows the same principles of social work pro profession of accepting the child and the family of working with the family and child of working in the community of using social work methods with the family it is just not putting the child in school and providing all for the child's education and need but follow up regular visits to the family how the child is studying does the child need help does the child have any health problems does the child have any psychological problem what is the situation in the family what is uh, what is the neighborhood like so it has got a psychological approach a community approach an ecological approach it is a comprehensive integrated professional social work and that is why the ethics in sponsorship is equally important do we just give money and how do we get the sponsorship in whose name do we get sponsorship so the agency that gets funding has to be ethically accountable and keeping accounts and to the funding agency to the organization and to the public public society at large millions of children all over india today are sponsored and there are beautiful case histories of children who have been sponsored done their schooling done their college today are independent economic and i was happy to say, happy to tell you that when i evaluated the family service center in in bombay now the sponsored children who are now got are economically independent are now giving money to sponsor other children mm -hmm. they themselves have benefited so they know what it is to sponsor children who are in need yeah what goes around comes around yes think, so. yes and uh, that's the most pleasant thing that uh, us humans have yes um so you think it's very relevant in india even today yes it is relevant because it has it follows the child policy india has signed the convention on the rights of the child the rights the child determination respect for the child protection and survival of the child education and development of the child these are four basic principles of the un convention for the child and uh, i i think child labor is almost you know mm. on its way out because of a lot of effort from the government and from all uh, institutions yes. and all that but and uh, i understand still i mean i i may be wrong but in the rural areas i mean every hand counts yes. especially in the fields and other things especially when you don't have mechanized way of farming so yes. every hand counts and therefore the child also is necessary to support the family in the field uh, is that uh, something that you have come across yes we have come across and in fact that's a very good question a very good point because sponsorship takes care of the most vulnerable children that is prone to child labor and child trafficking and that is why even we encourage the children to be an active member in the family 
okay the child may go to school in the morning comes home has her or his food and then helps the parents for a little while then again goes back to study it doesn't mean that the child who receives sponsorship neglects every other family responsibility the child is developed as a responsible human being to be an adult within the family within the family yeah okay at the premium gateway to mangaluru one of the premier cities of karnataka possessing all types of domestic and international connectivity is a full fledged commercial complex the premier kana nandur now available to make your dream venture a reality each floor is spread across 4200 square feet to provide a class ambience to your clientele adding to all safety norms the premier corner is all set to be a game changer for any business thanks to its easy connectivity located right beside nh66 premier corner has been built in view of futuristic needs with ample space for vehicle parking in two basements the g plus 3 story building is the right place to start premier ventures like corporate office vehicle showroom it firms exclusive retail shops brand outlets and to add on a terrace cafe come invest and own this premier space at premier corner contact plus 9181971436750 or plus 9176762181 for a premier business deal uh, so again what was the title of your phd thesis uh, dr gracy my title of my phd thesis was child sponsorship a tool for development okay yeah uh, so that's a tool i think all of us can use as we go along if we are in this profession yes now speaking of the profession itself social work you're working with children you're working with families you're working with individuals who have emotional and other issues yeah. you have um, i mean you are interacting with people in a very sensitive environment yes so i understand you have also written a book on the ethics of social work yeah. education yeah. yes how would you characterize um, being ethical in a social work profession i mean everybody is a social worker they, i mean everybody thinks they are a social worker oh, yes. everybody <laughs> Uh, believes by giving a little money here and there they are doing social work uh, but there is something there has to be something ethical about it so what should be the ethics that anybody who is in this profession or who is practicing social work in one form or the other okay. what is the ethics that uh, he should he or she should follow e- ethics is a study of science of morals and values hmm. it is the foundation of ethics is the value system of the person is the what is good or what is bad how do we choose that for example i am a social worker in a family service center and there is a woman who comes to me and she is discovers that she is pregnant she comes to me she says i already have children i already have two children and this is an unexpected pregnancy i want to abort the child now what should i answer yes or no what are my values what are the values of this client who's come to me how do i accept this woman how do i respect her how do i accept her self determination what do i put before her the pros and cons of abortion and tell her my values and ultimately leave it to her to decide so this is where ethical dilemmas really come in for example another student wants a job he wants to make his passport he wants a job and he goes to his company to tell him please give me my certificate the company tells him please you come after a week we are very busy should i should this gentleman give under the table so that he gets a certificate fast is corruption legitimate or what should i do so these are ethical dilemmas directly in the field so and ethical dilemmas are not just in direct relationship they come into administration they because administration is writing documents is accounting is planning programs it is strategic planning it is policy planning practice planning program planning so ethics underlies everything possible in the personal life individual life and work life there is what is called 
deontological approach and a teleological approach. Deontological approach is what is right is right, come what may. Teleological approach is the greatest good of the person. Now I take the context and see what is best and that is what it is. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so you are saying that ethical uh, practice in social work, for that matter in any profession, it is yeah. very important yes. Yes. and most of us uh, leave them behind because we want to get ahead faster. Yes. Uh, everything is fast in these days including uh, coffee. <laughs> I mean, you just put a little bit of instant coffee, yes. but it doesn't have the same taste as filter coffee. Yes. And that's, that is itself the, gives you an idea of what an ethical dilemma is. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still more to come with uh, Dr. Gracie. Thank you.